guys, I am going to be reacting to the um, YouTuber Mr. Nightmare. I have seen some of his videos. They're actually really scary. And today, we are watching three creepy real movie theater horror stories. So, um, I just want to make a quick thing. YouTube, please do not, um, do not, do not, let me get this right, do not copyright my video. I'm just doing this to show my, like, show people scary things um, about this story. So, let's just get on full screen, and let's start. It was April of 2015. Me, my girlfriends, and my little brother, who was nine years old, had gone to a small nearby movie theater on a Wednesday night to see the horror movie It Follows. Okay. We usually went late on weekends to get the whole theater to ourselves. Plus, I had off on Thursdays that semester. When we entered the theater, at first it seemed like we were the only ones inside, but then my little brother pointed somebody out. It was a man in a dark gray hoodie sitting in the top left corner seat in the theater. It was a little sketchy, but nobody would really give it a second thought. We picked upper middle row seats with a railing in front so we could put our feet up, and we each sat with an empty seat between us for more room. I know, that sounds weird to do with my girlfriend with me, but having my brother there made it a different story. I was sitting the closest to the edge, and therefore the closest to the one other guy in the room besides us. Within five minutes, the previews were over, and the movie was starting. The lights in the theater dimmed to darkness, and the only light now was a light projecting from the screen. My little brother took out his bag of candies he snuck in, and started to eat them obnoxiously loud. About five minutes into the movie, over my brother's loud candy wrapper noises, which we told him to stop for the record, I thought I heard a pretty loud sound come from above and behind us. I waited a few seconds to sneak a glance behind us, and saw that the guy that was sitting in the top corner had moved down a row, which was odd. But again, I didn't give it more than a second thought. Oh jeez, scary. Another five minutes later, when the movie was already starting to get interesting, I heard something from behind us again. I turned when I thought it wouldn't be too obvious, and again, the guy was a whole row closer to us. I leaned to my girlfriend and said while chuckling, don't look, but that guy keeps moving closer to the screen. She shrugged her shoulders and didn't even show interest in checking. I told myself if he did it again, then I would have a problem and managed to get back into the movie. I'd say another five minutes later, without even hearing anything this time, I just turned around out of curiosity and saw the man a whole row closer, but this time he wasn't at the last seat of the row anymore. He was moved further down the row, closer to us. Now he was only three rows behind us. I nudged my girlfriend and she turned around. Then she looked at me and gave me a confused, concerned kind of look. She asked me if we should move, and I said definitely not. At this point I wasn't able to pay attention to the movie anymore. Even though I was facing the screen, I felt like the man's gaze was hitting me in the back of the head. I told myself if he moves closer, I would turn around and firmly ask him what he was doing. But then I also thought, what if I'm looking too much into this? What if he's just a normal guy who happens to keep switching seats for a better view? Once more, I turned around, and the man was only two rows away from us now, closer to the center of the row, or rather, directly behind us, and his head was just completely down looking at his lap. I didn't even bother to check what he was looking at. He could have been looking at nothing. I literally opened my mouth, ready to say something, but I was just too much of a coward. I was only 16 last year, and pretty skinny. My little brother got up during a slow part of the movie to go to the bathroom. Okay, I'm gonna pause right here and say what the heck just happened. Okay, so a um, man in a hoodie, he's looking down at his, like, stomach. Okay, um, it's pretty loud. Um, so I pretty, and then I guess he keeps moving forward, and then now his brother has to go to the back, so let's resume. About a minute later, I turned to see if the man had gotten closer again, 
this time actually ready to say something. But I was shocked to see nobody behind us. It was completely empty. I told my girlfriend, and she said good. But then I stood up in pure fear, thinking of my little brother. Telling my girlfriend to wait there, and running out of the room and into the empty theater halls, I saw the man in the gray hoodie entering the men's bathroom down the hall. Fearing for my little brother's safety, I ran down the hall toward the bathroom, opened the door, and saw the man literally on his knees peeking under the two stall doors. Then he looked at me, and at the same time, I heard my little brother call me from down the hall. I saw him waving me over in confusion. I ran to him, got my girlfriend out of the movie room, and we went to the front desk. The team working the front ticket stand called the police, showed us and the cops the video footage of the man walking down the hall, and then we filed a police report. I'm just so grateful that my brother went to a different bathroom down the opposite direction of the hall. Because if he had been in there, even with my showing up to save him, I have no idea what would have happened. It's been over a year now, and the man was never identified. Dang. Uh oh, story two. Mm. Back in 2008, Cloverfield was one of the biggest movies of the year, and I desperately wanted to see it. Most of my friends had already gone to see it, which ups. Okay, one second. So we still be recording, okay. That me, given that I didn't want to be seen going to the movie theater alone. However, I didn't have work or school on Thursdays. So on Wednesday night, I figured I could get away with going alone to one of the small theaters nearby with a screening of the film at 9.30, since I knew it would be quiet. Well, I showed up, bought a ticket, and immediately realized the entire building was dead. I entered the theater, and much to my surprise, there was not a single person in there. There were two large sections of seats in the theater. I sat in the bottom row of the upper section, which was seated just behind a tiny wall. During the quiet parts of the movie, which were very few, I kept thinking that I was hearing something coming from behind me. It was almost like I was hearing a voice. Is someone there? Nothing. I felt like the sounds were just getting louder and closer. But I kept turning around and didn't see anyone. I felt like I was losing my mind. Eventually, the sounds became so loud that it was evident it was a crazed whispering. I was about to nope the fuck out of there. But when I got up and took one last look behind me, a figure popped up quickly from behind the seats just two rows up from me, arms flat to their sides, and just facing me like a stiff statue. I ran like there was no tomorrow back to the lobby, where I saw nobody, not a single employee. I kept running to the car, took a few seconds to catch my breath once inside, and drove back home. I tried calling the theater that same night. I never got anyone to answer. I didn't bother the next day, and I just tried to let it go. It still freaks me out beyond imagination to this day. That's scary. One of my first jobs was working at a movie theater in Huntington on Long Island. It was an okay gig for a 16-year-old. Dealing with the general public in mass, you'll always run into creeps. However, there was one creep and one really weird situation that I still have nightmares about. It was a Monday, like 11 o'clock at night, and the last two playing movies were finishing up, which was earlier than usual. On weeknights, I would usually be out of there by midnight during the summer. Anyway, I was the only one working besides Kathy, the lady behind the popcorn counter who was closing up. I was sitting on the carpeted steps next to my ticket podium on my phone when Kathy yelled over to me to sweep the floors. She told me she was heading out and would be back within the hour to close up. I hurried up with the sweeping and sat back down to get back to playing a Tetris-like game on my flip phone. I was left alone a lot like this, and this was the one time during my shifts that I feared something such as a late night robbery might easily take place. Suddenly, I heard the front door to the theater pull open with force. I stared down at the doorway to the lobby, which blocked the actual entrance section, waiting for someone to walk through, and hoping it would be Kathy. After all, she would have locked the doors anyway at this hour. I called out Kathy's name. And suddenly, an upper middle-aged man with a big brown faded jacket came wandering in, immediately locking his eyes onto mine. 
I told him we were closing up and he had to leave. Hey guys, Blue Gator right here. And before I start the video, um, I just want to say that um, thank you very much for whoever subscribed and viewed my videos. It is a big, big thing for me. Um, can you please keep it up? Watch my videos, subscribe. Um, it make me very happy to it'll make me very happy just to upload for you guys because I know that you guys enjoy my videos and you want to see more. So yeah, and um, I have made a a Gmail. It's bluegatory2003 at gmail dot com. Um, go to your Gmail. Type um, ask me, like ask me or tell me whatever you guys want me to do for my future videos and if you want to go follow my twitter it's at garnet 2000 at garnet that's savage i don't know why but yeah so go to those two things and hit and comment and follow me so yeah let's thank you very much and enjoy the video